Hey, what's up everyone? Just back with another ranking video. AC here. Um, this time on the Foo Fighters to commemorate uh, the new release, uh, Medicine at Midnight, which just came out last Friday. And um, I thought in timely fashion, I'll get this out, here, out there um, because it's going to be dead last. No, just kidding. Um, I actually quite like it. So, um, so there are 11 releases to rank though, 10 studio albums and one studio EP. So we're not doing the, um, the, the live stuff or the greatest hit stuff. So to kick it all off, number 11, the St. Cecilia EP, which of course boasts the title song, which was kind of the hit off this one. And, um, when this came out, I think it was a vinyl only deal. I don't even think it was on like streaming or anything. Not that that was quite as big of a deal 10 years ago. Um, I just find that uh, that release, I could have put it above the, the next one, the number 10, but uh, there's nothing really that bad about it, but there's nothing really that special. It's just kind of a generic um, Foo Fighters album or EP. And uh, nothing really ever jumped out at me on it, but it's definitely nice to have anyway. Um, number 10, this probably could have been the last place, to be honest. In Your Honor, I remember the lead up to this one uh, just being very, uh, you know, hyped for a, a double album of the Foo Fighters. You know, what could go wrong? But I think during this era, they spread themselves a little too thin. And uh, one, if you don't know, one side is a rock side, all the loud bangers and then the second side is kind of more tender acoustic stuff more in the vein of um, you know Marigold by Nirvana which of course Dave Grohl worked with Nirvana or he was a band member of Nirvana um, kind of uh, yeah more tender songwriting more acoustic stuff but I think that the dynamic was lost they could have worked these songs kind of into each other and made them a little more dynamic Resolve is, is kind of dynamic, but really the only takeaway from this is, is the big hit single, Best of You, which I didn't like initially. It was all over the radio when this came out. They played it once an hour. It was just overkill. And then by the time that Prince played the Super Bowl and covered this song, Best of You, um, I thought, wow, okay, that is actually good. So it took Prince to make me realize what a good Foo Fighters song, Best of You, is. And these guys were just blown away that Prince covered them. And, you know, arguably that was the best Super Bowl performance ever. Um, how timely. There just was a Super Bowl, but it was a, a really lame Super Bowl for everyone involved. And uh, I know a lot of people that lost a lot of money on that. So In Your Honor, um, the title song In Your Honor, Best of You, Resolve, those are kind of my, f my favorites to take away. Um, still is nice, too. But, uh, and there's a couple interesting guests on the second side, but whenever I think of Foo Fighters, I never go to put that one on. Like, never. Um, okay, so we're at number nine. Echoes, Silence, Patience, and Grace, which is somewhat of a, a, a comeback, I guess. I mean, the sales never went down, but quality-wise, I think it is way better than In Your Honor because it kind of does... Um, bring back the dynamics. You have just as many rockers as kind of more quiet songs. Um, the big hit, of course, is The Pretender, which is very theatrical sounding. <laughs> and then Let It Die, which is very mellow and then builds and builds. And then Why'd You Have to Go and Let It Die? Um, Home is nice. Um, Long Road to Ruin is one that I don't really care for that much. And that was a big hit single. Just like the last one, whenever I, I think of Foo Fighters or want to throw a record on, I very seldom would reach for this. Um, it's been a long time since I've listened all the way through. It's definitely not a bad album though, and I know a lot of people that really like this one, but you know, for me, all the classic records and then the ones that, that came after I actually like more. Now this is going to be kind of sacrilege for a lot of people. But this I'm ranking number eight. And a lot of people go, why? This was their their true comeback, and this is their, their best record that is in the first three classic records. Um, 
I, I love the idea behind it. I love that they kind of went back to the shack or back to the garage with uh, Butch Vig and released this one. And it is, you know, a tried and true rock record, definitely. Um, I find that the first two tracks, though, are the best ones. And then the album never really finds its footing after that ever again. Um, the first two tracks are just classic Foo Fighters. The rest is all good, though. Um, I just... You know, I'm not one of those people that go, you know, this is the best post, there is nothing left to lose Foo Fighters record. Some people, this is even their favorite Foo Fighters record, and that's cool by me. But, uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely remember the excitement when this came out. I remember buying it day of release, and it was the first time since One by One that I was really excited for the Foo Fighters again. So it'll always have that going for it. Um, number seven, and a lot of people are going, you're crazy to put this in front of wasting light, but Concrete and Gold, which, you know, the Foo Fighters are never known as an experimental band, but I think this is their most experimental record, and that's probably the reason why it's going to be uh, not certified ever. <laughs> um, so they were ballsy enough to release Run as the first single, which is by far the loudest on this record. It's kind of like another white limo. Um, and, um, yeah, I don't know, there's very something very Zeppelin-esque Zeppelin -esque about this. I think I invented a word. Um, it's kind of like a, a single LP physical graffiti in a way, in sound. You know, it's got some really kind of hard rockers, make it right and la-di-da, but nothing, nothing on the album sounds obvious or too calculated. It sounds very scattershot but in a good way there's n there's not really a track i i don't like at all um the line is definitely the weakest and i think it's really weird that that was the third single and it just did nothing um i could have called that one for them um yeah it's it's a really cool record it's very dense you know it's not it wasn't going to be one to have the big hits off it i think thankfully the sky is a neighborhood did quite well which was the second single um I just find that a very interesting listen, and to be honest, it could have been swapped with this one, maybe, but Sonic Highways, when this came out, you know, I said I got re-excited on Wasting Light, you know, re-excited for the Foo Fighters again, it was a good feeling, but then when this one came out, you know, that, that feeling kind of amplified, and, um, yeah, again, I got it day one of release, and, uh, that whole, um, uh, docu series they did also called Sonic Highways that was really um, that was really interesting I liked those um, Dave Grohl kind of digging deep into each regional location and their sound and their history and you know there's a guest on every um, you know all eight tracks of the album um, though you'd hardly know it it just it sounds very Foo Fighters so you know, in a way that's a good thing because the guests aren't obtrusive, like guests sometimes can be on rock records. But at the same time, like, some of these guests I'd like to hear a little more, to be honest with you. Um, yeah, I don't know, I like the whole aesthetic of the record. Um, it's probably not as consistent as Concrete and Gold, but just because when this came out, I listened to this so much. I think that's why it ranks a little higher, so this one's number six. I think the... the the two best tracks off the album are Something From Nothing and I Am A River, so the book ending tracks. I Am A River is so powerful, and Something From Nothing is just... I, I, I mentioned Led Zeppelin on the last LP, but this one, it really has a Zeppelin stomp to it. It really sounds like John Paul Jones or something like that, and that's just a, a, an epic compliment. And there's also something really like funky about it, which isn't really something you'd normally say about the Foo Fighters. And, um, well, speaking of that, definitely their funkiest record, the new one, and you're saying, I don't like this one, though, AC. Why did you rank it so high? Are you just trolling us? But this is actually my favorite one since One by One. I've listened to it a lot. I really like it. i got to admit, I was really worried when this was um, announced and Shame by Shame was the first single, and I thought, eh, this is okay, but <laughs> let's kind of see how it is in context of the album, because there, there have been a lot of bands where they release a first single, and I think it's alright, 
and then the album comes out and I go, wow, it makes sense now. And I think the sequencing between Making a Fire and Cloud Spotter, I think Shame by Shame really makes a lot of sense. Uh, the, other, the next single, No Son of Mine, I liked even more. Uh, that one's quite a rocker. And then Waiting on a War, definitely my least favorite by far off, off uh, this, this whole album. But, um, you know, not a bad song, really. But the, the intro song, Making a Fire, is probably one of my favorite songs that the Foo Fighters have done um, in a long time. Or maybe bar none, like, yeah, I really like that one. So yeah, Medicine at Midnight, all the way at number five. You can call me crazy if you want to, but uh, next up is One by One, which maybe isn't quite as consistent as, as Medicine at Midnight, but it's got, you know, some of their best songs off, off it. You know, the obvious ones, of course, All My Life and um, Times Like These. And then, um, you know, uh, Lonely Is You is good, Come Back is good, uh, Low is really... A cool single have it all which I think was a single in like New Zealand or Australia or something it wasn't a single over here surprisingly enough um, disenchanted lullaby lullaby is good mm. um, yeah it's, it's got a couple like halo and burn away don't do anything for me but it's a solid album you can kind of tell there was a lot of contention during this album like they almost broke up during the making of this so it's good that they soldiered on. And, um, you know, they, they gave two of the best songs out of their legacy in this one, All My Life and Times Like These. Still don't get sick of those. They were so overplayed that the year that that album came out. And they're still, they hold up, you know. You just got to take a six-month break from good music that's overplayed. And it'll get good again. Um, number three, Foo Fighters, Eponymous. This came out all the way back in 1995. Dave Grohl made the... Uh, the very brave and bold decision to go out on his own and, you know, write and record his own stuff. And this could have been just called Dave Grohl because he plays and sings everything on it. But he assembled a band out of it, which is, you know, worked even better. But, you know, he, he was offered when Kurt Cobain passed away, Tom Petty offered him the gig of being his drummer. And, you know, think of how different his career would be if he was like to Tom Petty what Max Weinberg was to to the boss for so long um but yeah instead he put out this really grungy record and um you know this has a lot of great ones off it this is a call is of course great i'll stick around is one of my favorite foo fighters songs ever alone and easy target i really like that one um ecstatic is cool exhausted um you know there, there's there's kind of funny little songs like he doesn't sound too serious on for all the cows or Weenie Beanie or Big Me, but, um, because even the quiet moments aren't very, uh, you know, they're not very, very serious. I think maybe that was a defense mechanism because of dealing with Kurt's death, and that really affected Dave a lot. Like, Dave's quite a nice guy. Um, yeah, so, I think that one will always be number three. Um, this one's a little dusty, but it is my number two, is, uh, There's Nothing Left to Lose. And this is how I discovered the the Foo Fighters. And they gave away a little tattoo in the CD when this came out. And I remember I put it on my... Was it my leg or my arm? I think it was my arm. And I was on vacation in Hawaii with my family. And I tricked this girl in the, in the pool <laughs> and said it was a real tattoo. Um, but yeah, this is... Uh, that's not a very good story to tell. This is uh, how I discovered them, really. Like, I'd heard My Hero on the radio in 98, but I didn't know who the band was. I just thought, I like this song. And then when this came out, Learn to Fly came out, and I was like, ooh, the Foo Fighters. Like, I like this band. And I got the record, or I got the CD, and Stacked Actors came on, and it was just like, love at first listen. And I think that'll always be one of my top five favorite Foo Fighters songs, Stacked Actors. And it's also my favorite of their intro songs like bridge burning and um something from nothing definitely making a fire all my life those are all great intro songs but this one's got to be my favorite intro song uh learn to fly is one of the best hit singles ever generator aurora is absolutely beautiful for anyone that thinks that the foo fighters are like one-dimensional 
you know, they do have a lot of critics because they're a popular rock band and people go, oh, they're too corporate or they're too safe. No, listen to Aurora. That's an amazing song. So well written, very well sung actually by Dave. Um, he actually does a lot of singing on this record, which uh, you go, well, yeah, he's the singer, but no, he does a lot of smooth singing. This is like his best singing record, I think. Um, and I always like how that one folded out. And yeah, they were doing it just as a trio for, for that record. And then they added a fourth while touring. So he was like in the videos uh, from, I think, the second single on. He was definitely in the music video for The One, which was a single that came out kind of in this album's lifespan, but wasn't on the album. And then number one, as to surprising nobody, is um, The Color and the Shape a record I don't think they'll ever top and uh, yeah this is just prime Foo Fighters you know I'd rather put this on than a greatest hits from the Foo Fighters because I just think it has some of their best songs in the singles and the album tracks um, you know I love Monkey Wrench just pure energy I remember that was out on one of the Guitar Heroes the rock bands and doing the rapid fire one last thing before I quit is one of the most like fun parts to sing in any song on on that whole playlist of that video game. Hey Johnny Park is amazing. I remember when I got this also in Hawaii when I had There's Nothing Left to Lose. Uh, it was my birthday on that vacation, 13th birthday. And I got this and my uncle was going down the track listening because he was, who are these Foo Fighters anyway? Doll, Monkey Wrench. They have a song called Hey Johnny Park. He kind of said it in the like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Like, what kind of band is my nephew listening to? Um, and I think that's one of their best songs, and it's so dynamic. My Poor Brain and Wind Up are just, oh, just crazy energy, like, almost punky songs. You know, My Hero, one of the best. Enough Space, one of the loudest songs they ever recorded. Maybe the loudest. I like that one a lot. And Everlong, you know, what a what a crowning achievement. What a great song as a rocker and it's also kind of tender and I think that was one of David Letterman it was his favorite song ever actually and he invited the band on multiple times to do it they did it when it was new they did it you know around the time he had his heart surgery they did it when they um, were doing uh, what is it Wasting Light back to back I think it was like one of the encores they played that album back to back then they played some greatest hits sort of stuff and then I think they did it on one of his very last shows. Uh, and they did it some other times. I think they might have performed it like 11 times on the David Letterman show. And, you know, it's hard to pick just one song as the best Foo Fighters song. I could pick Stacked Actors or Learn to Fly or My Hero. But, you know, Everlong would be a very solid choice for best song. So that's it, actually. That's um, top 11, the Foo Fighters full length plus the EP. So, anyway, sh uh, tell me what some of your favorites are, and, uh, yeah, we'll just talk foo, and we'll fight those foo. So, uh, yeah, anyway, catch you in the next video, everyone. Peace out.